Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program, how to design a shuttle for real this time. You may remember a long time back I made a how to design a shuttle video thing. Let me save this real fast because yeah. And it wasn't very, shall we say, accurate. Because in the end I did not produce an actually working shuttle. However, I did give the basic concept of how to design one, but now I've actually made one that works, and so we're going to kind of just look at this real fast. And uh, So, of course, it has RCS uh, to maneuver in space. That little bit of strut shouldn't be there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let me... Oh, well, now it's going to be saved midair. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't like to save things midair in the VAB or SPH. I like them to be on the ground, because that's more real... Yeah, uh, RCS, of course, so that it can maneuver. It's on the nose, and if you look on the back, there's a bit on the top, bit on the rear, slightly clipped into those smaller engines, bit on the bottom. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking about that, because I have the indicators, indicators up for a reason. Okay, so center of thrust is almost at the center of mass, but not quite, and also that accounts for all engines, but really you wouldn't be using the jet engine in space, nor would you be using the jet engine... Uh, I mean, using the other engines not in space, so uh, that's not 100% accurate, but uh, it never really was. Uh, as you can see, center of lift is a little bit behind center of mass to keep stability. Um, really, it'd be cooler if it was a bit closer, actually, because this thing has a hard time pulling up. You actually have to have the engine on at full power, well, not quite full power, but pretty much full power, to keep enough speed to be able to pull the nose up, and even then... You can't pull out of the re-entry dive until about two kilometers up. So, of course, like I was saying, uh, as is essential with any plane, you need to have the center of lift a little bit behind the center of mass. Uh, as you can see, we have a cargo bay. We have a light and a uh, docking port in there. Um, we have, of course, the kind of standard shuttle design for the wings. I kind of like that. Uh, these are nav lights, which I've actually placed like nav lights would go on a real plane uh, using the aviation lights mod. This fuel tank here, you might have noticed, this is actually a rocket fuel tank. Uh, that's the Mark III. Um, again, a mod part, of course. Uh, of course, the sh cargo bay is also a mod part. That's the lazy animated cargo bay doors or something like that. Uh, there's two SAS and a fuel tank on the back here. The SAS allow you to actually pull up. <laughs> There's an intake, of course, uh, there's a parachute, there's an antenna, there's the monopropellant tanks back there, then there's two LVT-45s and these Rockamex tiny things, whatever they're called, uh, which are on cubic struts. Um, if I go like this, you can see there's the cubic strut. You can also see behind the docking port is a uh, generator the, you know, radioisotope, and then also you notice we have some clip parts, uh, some extra fuel tanks, some uh, these uh, NCS adapters for aesthetics. Uh, we have the fuel lines, which there's two sets. Basically, one set goes in, the other set goes out, uh, allowing you to drain from all tanks from any engine, which is handy when you're trying to run several engines simultaneously. The drogue chute is basically an emergency chute. If you cannot land for whatever reason, you fire that, and then the crew will survive, even though the rest of the shuttle will be destroyed. Um, it can't be used for landings because of KSP's little, uh, I'd call it a bug, uh, where if your vertical speed hits zero, the chutes stop deploying. Really, chutes should stop deploying when your total speed, total surface speed hits zero, really, shouldn't it? But, uh, anyhow, that's, that's, whatever. Um, let's see. So, oh yes, the landing gear placement. If you notice, the landing gear only a little bit behind the center of mass. Uh, now, since this is intended primarily as a landing vehicle, I could actually put them further back. But, I'm going to show you that this orbiter can take off on its own as well. Okay, so here we are on the runway. Um... I'm going to explain what I'm going to do real quick before I actually do it, because uh, it seems that there is some sort of glitch with fraps, which I now have to use instead of DX story. Um, oh yes, I also have the uh, Mark III uh, IVAs mod, so I have IVAs on this thing. Um, anyhow, there's some sort of glitch, it seems, or I haven't set it up properly, or what. I don't know why it doesn't work properly that way, but... Whenever I... Oh yes, those are the ground warning lights I just toggled on. 
just the strobes and the beacon up here. And then I have the nav lights. The uh, the engine power will override my my th my face. Yeah, my face, my uh, my speaking. So I'm going to uh, explain what I'm going to do before I take off. There's also this ant engine, which is for dumping excess fuel, which is why it's attached to a liquid fuel only tank. Anyhow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire the rocket engines enough to get off the ground. Um, in fact, you can't throttle them above uh, one third throttle when you have both both sets activated um, because they, well, they're not balanced properly, basically. And then I can turn on the jets, and I think the intake is open. Yes, good, good. So I will go ahead and fire it as well. I don't remember which action group does that, so I'm just going to, you know, activate it. Of course, normally I don't fly it like this, but uh, you may not even be able to hear what I'm saying. So the part I throttled down is when it started to uh, basically when it started not being able to, uh, hush, what's the word? It started pulling up on its own. Because of the thrust. See, like it's doing right now. Like it started doing just then. Which is also very dangerous, by the way. I'm just gonna go ahead turn on the engines for a little while like this. Whoops, that is not what I meant to do. That's uh, kind of a strange issue I just had. But uh, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and fly it like this for a little while. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to turn these off. Whoops. Now we're flying under jet power only, uh, which is how you're supposed to land this thing, by the way. And uh, I just realized that means, basically, once you're under jet power, once you're on the final leg of your journey, um, this thing does not fly very well, um, as it should. It's a shuttle. It's not a. It's not a plane. It shouldn't be flying that well. But um, I'm going to turn this on very briefly and hope it doesn't kill me. Hey, look at that. We're going up. We're going up quite fast, actually. It, uh, normally can't, it normally can't quite pull off what we're doing right now. Which is uh, kind of funny that we're actually managing to pull it off then. Right? Here's this thing we normally can't do that we're doing now. I'm actually going to try and turn and land it on the runway right now. I may not be able to, of course, because science. Although with careful application of rocket engines, I might be able to pull it off anyhow. Oh, I actually locked it. Okay, we're now at an angle where I feel like we can land this thing properly. Probably, maybe not. I don't know. We're gonna find out. It's also probably got some unbalanced fuel, or not. Okay, we're out of fuel on those first. Okay, so we're coming in for a landing. This is the part where we uh, we realize that we're falling way too fast, and pull up, and we put the landing gear down. We also, right about here, want to turn off the stability assistance because it becomes more of a hindrance than a help. Actually, no, wait, we're turning it off too soon. Uh, oh, that's not helping. Okay, so I'm watching the vertical speed gauge 
I want to keep it around 10 meters per second until I'm very close to touchdown, which is where I want it to be, of course, even lower than that. And right about here is when I turn off the stability assistance. And here is where I accidentally switch into IVA and I pull the drag chute to survive. Except we are going at except we are going at zero vertical speed, so of course the drag chute didn't help one bit. It's something I really hate sometimes. Also hitting the wrong buttons by accident. Anyhow, it can land. I've shown it before in a couple other things, uh, and I will again later. Let's go to look at the rocket now. So this is the launch vehicle. Take, give me a moment while I look at this to remember how to fly it. Uh, the atmospheric intake is number six I got a hit, okay, and toggling the main tank engines is zero. Now that's a very important thing to remember, the main tank engine toggle. Okay, so basically how this started, it started as one orange tank of fuel on each side of this center column. No secondary radial engines here. Uh, only one set of fuel lines uh, going between the tanks. No sapatrons. Uh, these little white tanks weren't here. These nose cones were here. These little docking ports weren't here. The SAS stuff at the top wasn't there, and the nose cone was there. Uh, and it flew pretty well on its own, like that. Uh, one Rockamax mainsail here, two skippers, the shuttle's own engines, that flew actually really nicely on its own. Um, the separations were a bit hit and miss, and there was a certain point where it would suddenly lose all semblance of control. So, I added more fuel to make up for more weight that I was about to add. I added SAS wheels to counteract the roll. Uh, I added these radial engines so that we could switch engines and have something that would work. Um, Sepatrons. I basically all guessed at how to do this, and I got lucky. And really, that's all there is to it. You got to you got to just keep redesigning it slightly, bit by bit, until you get lucky and have something that works. In my case, I got lucky, and the second try was perfect. But uh, you know, it's very hard to get that lucky about it. Also, um. The docking ports, if you're wondering why there's docking ports on the main stack, that is so that you can build uh, a station out of these fuel tanks from the main stack. Um, because this, like the real space shuttle, can bring its main tank to orbit. Difference being, of course, the main tank has an engine on it, a giant engine, and a bunch of SAS wheels. So I might later on try to make some big epic craft out of these. Um, don't think I can, but... Uh, I'll try anyhow. Now this part of the video I'm going to edit in post. Basically right now I'm hitting G to turn off my landing gear. I'm hitting 6 to doggle that intake and 2 for the nav lights and 1 for the ground warning lights. Then I throttle up to 2 notches under maximum, turn on the SAS and launch. Stage when these run out of fuel and uh, toggle the main engines hitting zero, which toggles between this Rockamax down here and these radial engines at a certain point. Uh, do my gravity turn at a certain point, control throttle, blah, 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 you know, standard space shuttle things. So, uh, here goes nothing. Okay, no, up until that point, we've had a completely automated ascent. Um, also, there is, that is the occasional problem that does happen with this design, is that... Uh, ooh, jeez. The occasional problem that happens with this design is that that... Uh, oh, we're actually still going up. The occasional problem that happens with that design is that... Uh, well, as you saw there just now, uh, the, what do you call it? The secondary engines 
the booster tanks I mean, can collide with the main engine or just by them separating the extra heat generated by that separation can cause it to overheat. This doesn't happen very often. Actually, okay, it happens about uh, every third launch. <laughs> but uh, I blame pilot error, uh, seriously. I think it's pilot error, um, which means I need to get better at flying, obviously. And right now what we're doing is we're burning off as much fuel as we possibly can. I'm not actually trying to do anything, just burning fuel alive. Away, a walk, a wire. So I accidentally hit spacebar. Uh, not good. I don't know why this engine isn't activating. Intake air to. Oh, oh no. There we go. All right. Um, we may be able to pull out of this, we may not. Chances are we're probably not going to pull out of it. But, uh, actually never mind, we're uh, pulling out of it, looks like. I imagine the ground's getting mighty close. Actually, no, it's not. Okay. So we are going to survive that, most likely, it looks like, now that I sur uh, didn't completely fail. Right, I'm going to turn this way, because this looks like a better place to land going this direction than the other direction that I was about to go. But um, as you can see, it flies much better now that we don't have a whole ton, of, whole ton of fuel. By much better, I mean it's slightly less likely to plummet into the ground suddenly. Which isn't much better if you think about it. But uh, anyhow, this time I'm going to land it properly. None of that uh, stupid... Uh, oh, and we don't even have a drogue shoot this time. But uh, shit, I'm not going to pull up in time. Oh, no, 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 no. And now you're looking at a case similar to the short video I posted, uh, Turbo Space Gentleman in a nutshell, which I'll post a link to in the description because, you know, science. But yeah, uh, I guess that's all I can really say on that subject for today, except that I suck at landing my shuttle now.